it's Shari here today and I'm going to be making this magic picture changer card and I'm going to be using colored cardstock and colored pencils to color my little scenes for this card. So the first thing I'm going to do is start by stamping out my images on the colored paper and I'm using the get well before and afters. Here's my magic picture changer dies that I'm going to be using and in this case because I'm using colored pencils I want to stamp my images first and color them and then use the dies to cut them out. But the first thing I want to do is use my dies as a guide to figure out just exactly where I want to stamp my images. So this is going to be the first image that you see is going to be the large piece. And I'm going to put this on this gray cardstock. This is narwhal cardstock. And I'm just taking a pencil and tracing that little square there because that is basically the frame where my picture is going to go. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the blue paper. This is going to be the second image, and this is also the piece of cardstock that is the pull tab. So I'm doing that on blue because this is going to be the happy whale, the one that is well. The other one is going to be my little sick guy with the thermometer and the water bottle on his head. So now I can stamp my images in those squares, and since I'm using colored pencils, I am going to be stamping with my black licorice ink. I don't need to worry about it smudging because of Copics because I'm using colored pencils. And this is just a different way of doing a magic picture changer to where you don't have to color the whole scene. If you're using the colored paper and you color on top with the colored pencils, you kind of already have part of the color there for you. So it's just a different idea. I'm also going to stamp this little bandage on this little guy. And then I'll actually add the little happy water droplets out of the other guy's spout here in a little bit. I kind of forgot it at first. I'm using my polychromo pencils. And I'm just doing some very simple coloring. Got a little purple on that water bottle. I did some pink and some white on the thermometer. And then since he's on gray cardstock, I'm going to color him in blues. So I went in and kind of did a wash of all my light blue first, and then I'm going to go in with the darkers and do some shadows and then blend it out with the light, much like you do with your Copic markers. And then for the whale on the blue, I'm going to color him gray. And this is just to get some contrast from the background colors. So I again went with my light, then I'm going to go in with some darker grays, and then I blend it out again with the lightest. And then now I'm going to kind of fill in the scene. I'm going to put him in some water. So I've got some tealy blues here, and I just drew some waves. And then I erased a little bit of my pencil line at the bottom. That's my guide, but it's going to get basically trapped under the pencil otherwise, so I just erased that. It's kind of going to get covered up by the other pieces anyways. But just to be safe, I erased it. And then for the sick Will here, I'm going to make him look like he's kind of not feeling well. So he's going to be on, sitting on the ocean floor, basically. So it kind of made it look like sand. And you can color past that square that we drew, obviously, because that'll go off the scene and behind the frame. So now I can use those pencil lines I drew before to line up my dies. And if you didn't draw those pencil lines before, of course, you just use that square that's in the die, and that's where you center up your picture. But the guide helped me make sure that I colored my water to where it went off the sides and the sand as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the gray piece. Just line up my little pencil lines that I had before. And part of the reason why I drew the frame is to make sure that I stamp in the correct place on my cardstock to where the die fits. I don't want to stamp the well too far down and then when I go to die cut it out, my die hangs off the edge of the paper. That would be very unfortunate. So that's partly why I draw those guides as well. So now that I've got that cut, I can just go in with my eraser and carefully erase those pencil lines. And the reason why I say carefully is because obviously you don't want to catch this eraser on those cuts especially this gray piece because those are sort of flaps. They're sort of hanging out there in space. You don't want to catch it with the eraser and bend it. So just be careful when you're erasing. 
I'm going to pop out that little slit there and then we can start to assemble our magic picture changer. So this die puts some score lines on these long sides here and it creates this very small fold which is a little more difficult to do on thicker cardstock like this so you just have to be very careful when folding it down. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to make that fold nice and sharp. And these pieces we're going to be putting adhesive tape onto and it's going to create the track for the blue piece to slide in and out of. So you can see there to get that one started I just kind of laid my bone folder against it just so I had something to press against and then once I get it started it's a little easier and then I can just crease that fold very well. So to assemble this I'm going to be using some of the new 8 inch terrible tape and you want to put a strip on both sides of both flaps. So I'm just trimming the excess off there, but then I started sort of tearing it at the right length a little bit better. So you don't have to have your scissors out. See this one I got a little bit too short, so I'm going to add a little scrap piece and trim that off. But on this second flap, you can see, I'm just gonna put it down and tear it right at the edge. Use my fingernail. This tear is pretty easy. And I just use my bone folder to make sure that tape is well stuck down, kind of burnished into the cardstock. So now I can fold my flaps down and create my track. So first I'm gonna fold this piece over. So I've got a nice flat area to use my bone folder against make sure that's nice and creased and now I'm going to fold down the little flap so this is the inside I'm going to peel off the liner paper and just fold it down on the inside and basically this is how we make the track for the blue piece to slide on and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side And then the powder tool, I am just gonna powder this thing to death, just to make sure there's no adhesive and get sort of the friction between my two pieces of cardstock. So I powder that whole back side. I'm gonna powder the back side and the front side of the blue one. I even powder the front side of the gray one. Just the more powder, the better. So now it's time to assemble these two little seeds together. So you can see I am sticking that tab through the slot. And then you're just going to weave these little pieces into the slots on the back side. So that's why they're loose. So you put those little tabs in there. One, two, three, four. All those little tabs are in there. You can see them poking out the back. And then you want to make sure your piece on the inside is nice and centered between those two tracks. You can see that it's going to slide nicely there. So you don't want to push it too far because they will come out, but when we put the little tab onto the pull tab, it will act as a stopper so that doesn't happen. So you just want to make sure when you're testing it out, you don't push it back in too far and unweave your pieces. So now that I've got it nice and centered, I've got it all woven together. Can just hold that there in the center and fold this closed onto those two adhesive strips. And this will complete the pocket. And once these two pieces are together, you can actually use the powder tool some more and get rid of any friction between the two pieces of cardstock that you might have. The more powder you add, usually the better it will slide. So now I've got the little pull tab die that comes with this 
die set. And this is gonna act as basically the stopper so that you don't push this too far when you're changing the picture back to the original. And it also gives an indication of what to do when someone gets the card with the little arrows. So it lets them know they need to pull up on that little arrow. So now I'm going to start decorating my card. So I'm using the Spiffy Speckles paper here. And I've got the Magic Picture Changer add-on there. This just cuts a panel with some nice stitch detail that covers the whole front. You can see the arrow that I've drawn on the die. That's because there's a tiny little divot in the top and that lines up with the tab at the top. So I just drew that arrow on my die so that in case I have a piece of paper where the direction matters, like the scallops or something, I know which direction and where that little divot is without having to think about it too much. Now the pencil lines I'm drawing here is where you want to put your adhesive. You don't want to put it on those two skinny sides because it will get in the way of the mechanism that slides that's going to be hidden behind this panel. And that was a mistake I made on the first one of these cards I made. So you can learn from my mistakes. So you want to put it on the two short sides because there's nothing there that's going to get in the way. And then you can go on the diagonal as well. And this should be out of the way of your moving mechanism. You can line up that sort of divot in the top with the slot. And now you've got a nice finished panel framing your scene. Now the Magic Picture Changer die comes with a frame, but this stitch scallop frame actually fits this almost perfectly. I actually like that it kind of sits out from the edge a little bit so you get a little bit reveal of the paper, the aqua color paper between the frame and the image. Just a little more detail there. So I've cut this out of the Blue Jay cardstock and I'm just going to light it up around my frame. It just is a nice detail. It's kind of nice that you can use this in addition to the frame that comes with the Magic Picture Changer die. So you have some options. Now I've got a Blue Jay card base here. I've also got some of the pink Spiffy Speckles paper. I'm gonna cut that with that windy backdrop die. And then I'm also gonna cut it with the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles to give it a nice finished edge and make it slightly smaller than my card base. So this will give me a nice Blue Jay frame around this background and that will tie into the frame that I put on my Magic Picture Changer piece. So I'll just center that up in my card base as well. Make sure I have a nice even frame all the way around it. And then I can put this whole piece onto the card base. Now instead of centering this Magic Picture Changer, I'm kind of going to move it more towards the top so that I have even spacing on the two edges and the top. So it's a little higher to the top and that's because I'm going to cover up the bottom with a piece of pattern paper. So now I have a piece of the purple color from the Spiffy Speckles collection and I'm just cutting that same large outside in stitch rectangle so that it'll match the same size of that background. And then I'm going to cut the top edge with this stitched wavy border. And I'm just figuring out the placement so that it doesn't cover up my picture. I just, I want it to be on the bottom. This is where I'm going to put my sentiment. So I'm going to use this sentiment that says get whale soon. And I'm just lining those up onto my block. I'm going to stamp it with the Blue Jay ink again to tie in that dark blue color that I've got going on here. And now to put it on my card base, since there's a lot of thickness to this magic picture changer mechanism, because we've got three card stocks plus some pattern paper, I'm putting a piece of foam tape across the bottom, and this will just lift this piece up to where it's all nice and even with all that bulk of the magic picture changer piece that is above it.
So I'm just going to line that up with the pink panel so that we still have our border on the bottom. And then now to do some decorating. So I've cut some pieces with the large wreath die. I really like using these pieces as seaweed. Um, I've cut some pieces from the green spiffy speckles. I've also cut some pieces from the aqua color from Watercolor Wishes, which is a little bit darker than the aqua of the spiffy speckles. And I've cut some from the pixie dust sparkle cardstock. So I'm just going to use these and kind of place them around at the bottom as if the seaweed's sticking out from the wave. I'm just using my liquid glue, just putting a few dots of glue onto the little leaves, and that should hold it in place perfectly. I'm cutting off the bottoms when I want some shorter pieces so that they're not all the same length and I have some variety in height. And because I did not glue this wave to that magic picture changer piece, I have lots of space to sort of tuck these behind because the only thing that's holding it down is at the very, very bottom. The other thing you want to be sure when you're doing this is to make sure you don't put any glue on any piece that might overlap the actual picture that changes because that will again adhere to that and not allow that to slide. So you just want to be careful and aware of anything that might overlap that picture. You can see there I have one of the green ones on the right overlapping it and this white one may overlap it a little bit but I'm going to be sure to not put any of the adhesive to where it touches it. And I put some at the top of this one but I made sure that the top was on that blue frame rather than my picture. I also thought it would be fun to embellish with some of the small pictures in this set so I've stamped out the band-aids and also the prescription bottle and I'm just going to color those with coconuts. Just some basic coloring, not a whole lot of shading. And bringing in some of the colors that I already have going on in the card. So I've got that pink tab at the top, that's why I use some pink on the bottle. And you'll see here in a little bit, I'm also going to pull in some pink die cut hearts in the same color to help bring that pink in. Once I have these colored, I can use the coordinating dies to cut these out, which is great because those band-aids are so tiny <laughs> but I'm just going to cut those out with the coordinating dies and I'll just use these almost as little embellishment pieces. Here's the little hearts that I'm going to use. They're also cut from the guava card stock and they're just cut with this line of hearts that's from the journaling card die set. I like to keep a whole bunch of these in a little pot in my desk. Anytime I have some scrap paper I just run it through my die cut machine with this heart die before I toss it because um, you can get quite a few little hearts out of some scraps. And then I just have all kinds of colors just sitting there and waiting to be used later. So I tucked that with a bottle of pills down towards the bottom, sitting in the seaweed. I'm just going to put these little band-aids sort of sprinkled at the top. And then I'm also going to sprinkle around these little hearts to tie in that beautiful pink color. And then finally, I have some clear droplets that I'm just going to add. These look like bubbles to me, and I just think that they add a nice touch to the finished card. So I'm just figuring out where I want to put them. There's a couple different sizes of these droplets in this pack. And once I figure out where I want them, I'm just going to use my jewel picker to pick them up and put them back down with some blue tube liquid glue.
And then here is my finished card. So that sick little whale and then the happy whale on the blue. I really love how the colors change with the different card stocks. Um, and I think you can get a really cool look using the colored pencils. It's just something different than your Copics. So I hope you give it a try. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye. Thank you.